Hey, I'm Anfa. Welcome to another dev update for Liblast. Some new things I've been working on is... Um, well, let me just show you. Let me log in. Oh, mistyped. Okay, now it's working. I'm logged in. So, in the user profile, you can now actually see your name and color that you choose. This gets updated. The green outline and the green color of this, um, of the, the display name is because of the team color. So my idea for Liblast uh, for the longest time has been that it's going to be team-based. So there's going to be two teams. And I wanted to make, to break up with the tradition of making the teams colored red and blue. So I made the teams lemon and purplish. So this outline indicates that the the players on the lime team and the same as with the text so it's it has to be obvious at the first glance that hey this guy is from the different team or this guy is from my team but this of, of course shouldn't be displayed like that in here and maybe i'm gonna add a toggle to like show how it how your profile looks with different team colors or find a different way to indicate the team color um anyway uh you can randomize your color now very easily. Just gonna generate a random one. But also you can randomize a name. So uh, if I ever wanted to troll someone and say like, uh, I also want to thank all my patrons, including very bland creation, trolley swift plank, almost agile object, furiously creaky dot, truly cheap chip, totally humid weight, a very tall inductor, probably sweet doll, truly stubborn melon, ultra rusty cabbage, fully tasty thingy, very tall bystander, strangely soft being, decisively bent meme, and of course, holy swift thingy. No, sorry, that was roughly sharp monkey. Thank you guys for support, and I'm gonna randomize some colors now. No, I'm just joking. Um, what is serious, though, is that there are new links um, in the top bottom right corner. If you click any of those, there, the game will open the link in your browser. So the first one is obviously going to take you to the, to the website. If I click it, now I'm here. If you click watch, it takes you to the YouTube channel. If you click chat, it takes you to the rocket chat because here you can lurk on the chat channel and you don't need to log in. Oh, sorry for the bright theme. Right. Oh, wait. Is this channel not available for anonymous guy? Oh, I need to make it available for anonymous people. Yeah, this shouldn't be required. Okay, that's something I need to fix. Okay, and if you go to contribute, you will be taken to the Codeberg page for Liblast. And if you click donate, you will be taken to the Open Collective page for Liblast. Because now we have an Open Collective page, like we've been verified by the op Open Source Collective, and we can uh, take donations. Um, through Open Source Collective. And that means that if you want to support Liblast, um, you can donate to our collective here. Um, like, I don't know, you want to help us pay for hosting, then, you know. You fill this stuff in. Probably needs a valid email, yeah. Blah at libla st. Oh, actually, that should work because we have a email redirection. And then you can choose either uh, 
card or PayPal um, to make a donation. And then that's going to go to the Libless Collective. And the budget, the, the funds are going to be stored by our fiscal host, which is Open Source Collective. And that means no one from the Libless team is going to pocket the money. It's going to be publicly visible in the budget. And we are also submitting publicly visible expenses that we've taken. Oh, wait, what happened? So, for example, one expense is uh, registering the libla.st domain for one year. Another expense is a donation I made for our Git host, Codeberg. They are hosting us for free. And if we were still on GitHub, we would have to pay $5 a month for the current uh, storage that we're using, which is 7.4 gigabytes, and Codeberg doesn't charge us anything. So I made a donation, and I didn't think about that, but then I thought, okay, I'm making, maybe I will submit it, because, you know, um, it is an expense. I didn't make, make the donation with the intent, but if we get more donations, I will totally intend to donate back to Codeberg, because, well, they are creating a... Um, hosting an absolutely amazing open source alternative to GitHub, GitLab, and other um, at least partially proprietary services like that. So I want to support that. And also there is another server hosting by Sina. Um, she's hosting the website right now. So this website is on her server and she's also providing another server with physical access that we can use to host uh, a game server and do other things for testing multiplayer stuff, etc. But that's gonna come in a bit later because multiplayer is still pretty much non-existent in the rewrite stage. Yeah, so that's what the links will do. Uh, so I want to thank Holy Sweet Brick, Subtly Dry Monkey, Rather Heavy Banana, Wisely Heavy Pebble, Wisely Exciting Ball, Somewhat Dull Orange. Can we get an orange color for us, please? Uh, yeah, I mean, brown is like a dull orange, isn't it? Okay. All right. Any second now. Orange. Yay, it was orange. I missed it. <laughs> now it's somewhat dull. Okay, that, that fits. And of course, really solid matter, which is colored in... Uh, yeah, that, that is definitely the color of really solid matter. Uh, let's not provide any further comment on that. So yeah, um, I'm excited with all the developments that are going on. And if we just want to hop in and play, we can jump around. And oh yeah, I didn't show up. There is camera zooming now working. If you hit the Z hit and hold the Z key, you can zoom in. And there's also a night sky, which kind of breaks with temporal anti-aliasing because it the temporal anti-aliasing smears it off. This is a bug I reported to the Godot team. But the temporal anti-aliasing TAA is not getting motion vectors from the sky shader. So you see the floor looks okay. You don't even notice there is a temporal anti-aliasing thing going on. But on the sky, it just smears everything out. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, some other things I want to work on is... Uh, yeah, this, uh, this player profile is not really... Uh, the stack above my head and the, the number, this... Uh, yeah, the next thing I need to do is make sure that this stuff is applied here, so it actually is shown in the game. Uh, there's lots of other things to do, like implement, you know, hit effects, actually make reloading, take time and block you because you can still shoot your gun even if you're reloading. <laughs> you can't shoot your gun when you're zoomed in, that's a good thing, but everything else, yeah. And of course you can't really kill anybody yet, even if you, let's see if I can not crash it, because usually it crashes if I do that. Oh, it didn't crash, okay. Yeah, there's also problems if you have multiple players in one game. The camera, like, 
the camera just like I'm not looking through my own eyes. I'm looking for the eyes of the bot. If I hit C to change my camera, now I'm looking at myself. And now I can see. Now I can hit C again to get back to the first person view. And now we can see the actual world through our eyes. And we can shoot. I mean, I need to reload because I just emptied my my clip. But nothing really happens. I mean, I get logs in the console that the character is hurt. So, I mean, hurt hits are registered on characters, but there is no dying yet. And also you can see now that there are two team colors, the lime and the purple, violet, purple. So yeah, the idea was to avoid the red color because then if you, if you want to have, you know, like splats or chunks in the team color, if you have a red team, the, these are going to look like blood. And I want to avoid that. I want to have the game be, um, not have any gore or, or blood or this kind of stuff. So it's totally safe for kids to enjoy. Uh, it doesn't mean that the characters are not going to fall apart in uh, fun ways. I mean, I intend to have some fun with particles and maybe, you know, ho hopefully ragdolls and rigid bodies, maybe soft bodies. I don't know. But yeah, that's it for the moment. And of course, I want to thank Furiously Wise Comet, Subtly Smelly Chip, Milkly Bouncy Cloud, Almost Shy Carrot, and Stupidly Flat Tomato, which is not red, but kind of mustardy. Oh, I should add mustardy to the list. Hold on. Uh, okay, where is my... Uh, where is my... Gen... Name generator. All right, so... What was the... What was the adjective? Mustardy. Mustardy? Okay, yeah, that's weird. Mustardy. That's, is that even a word? I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. Sure, of course. Let's commit that. Okay. That's all. Partially good fluff, which is green. I will let you know there is another... Oh, I got a notification on Rocket Chat. Sorry about that. I'll let you guys know if there's anything new of note. See ya.